Ready to go. The final quarterfinal matchup of the evening in the Mountain West Women's Basketball Championship. Krista Blunk alongside Tammy Blackburn, and it's three seed Wyoming. They got the first round by taking on six seed Boise State. The Broncos took care of business last night against 11 seed Utah State. These two teams split the regular season. That seems to be a pattern that we talk about. <laughs> it has been quite a battle to finish up the regular season in the Mountain West and to, to determine what these seeds will be. So we're expecting a close one here between these two. Wyoming, which is a little bit of a lopsided finish to the season. They had a four game losing skid only to come back and win two and then lose their last one 58 55 at San Diego State, a tight one. But here they are and they find themselves playing against a very hot and talented team and number six Boise State who I thought played an incredible game yesterday from from every, everything Krista from A to Z they were just locked in offensively defensively and their execution was real good yeah and that's what you got to do at this time of year you've got to bring your best game and if you're going to go on any kind of a run you got to be playing some clean basketball and you've got to bring the defense and so these teams were able to do that for this Boise State team. They got their 20th win on the season. They had lost three prior coming into this, but it's all about what you do right here. And for Wyoming, 16 and 13, 11 and seven overall. And they had gotten a win against Fresno State, a loss at San Diego State, as you said, a close one. So we'll see what they can bring here in this one. It's gonna be a good one. Quarterfinal number four the winner moves on to the semifinals tomorrow night they'll take on seven seed san diego state we'll have starting lineups for you when we return on the mountain west network starting lineups being announced inside the thomas and matt as the three seed wyoming gets ready for six seed boise state the broncos will start it off like this maya hansen in one of the guard spots with mary k narrow talented senior for this team. Elodie Lalat, another senior, one of five for the Broncos with Natalie Pasco and Abby Muse, another senior, bringing some experience to the lineup for Boise State. And for the three seed, Wyoming, they'll start it off like this. Emily Malima, the junior all defensive team member with Tess Barnes, another junior. Malina Peterson, is in one of the other guard spots with Ola Ustowska, the senior, one of four for the Cowgirls, and Allison Fertig, a two-time All-Mountain West member, named this year, leads this team in scoring, rebounding, blocks, field goals, you name it. She's a big piece to what the Cowgirls do. Broncos, they got the Royal Blue Unis, and the Wyoming Cowgirls, the three seed, Got the white uniforms on tonight as we get ready for the tip. Barely got a piece of it, but it ends up in the hands of Wyoming. These teams similar as far as their shooting percentages and what they do on the floor scoring wise, but not really the same style of play. Three ball off the iron, a rebound for Boise State. Broncos average about seven threes a game. Wyoming got six a game. And Wyoming's not gonna just, you know, put up 80, 85 points a game. They're gonna give you about 63 points, but they do hold their opponents to under 60 points per game. As you see, a quick hit to Abby Muse. So that'll, that'll be the challenge, TB. Yep. You know, we'll, Will the Broncos be able to get to their 64 plus points a game that they average? Peterson ball fake gets a little closer. First points for the Bron for the Cowgirls rather ties this one up. Natalie Pasco, the sophomore of Danville, California. Good spacing by Boise State. They work it around and around and out. The shot from Narrow won't drop. She's a big time player for this team. Doesn't always show in the stats, but does so many things. It's a left side, side layup's good for Molina. Excellent move by Molina, just taking it in to the rack hard with the left hand. You'll see her make that move. She's not afraid to attack. She also draws contact pretty well. She works quick. Pass off the mark. It's handed over to Wyoming. As Barnes brings it up. She'll set the high screen for Peterson. 
And really sealing off inside. Allison Furchig working hard. 28 players in history of Wyoming have become a member of that 1,000-point club. And she's one of them. Did it back in January of this year, did Furtig. She is great at both ends of the court. You'll see her be a good defensive player. Barnes got a piece of that one. The drive for Muse halted. Uh, the pass off the mark, though, is going to send it the other direction. Fairly fast pace for these teams trying to push. It's a four-point Wyoming lead. Heather Rizel, the head coach for Wyoming, has brought a, a little bit of a kind of a new pace for this Wyoming team. I and mean, she's done such a great job just in her second year. Yep, took over associate head for three seasons. Four years she was an assistant. There's Gerald Mattinson a few seasons as the head coach, but a longtime associate for Joe Ligurski. 16 seasons as the head coach for Wyoming. Had Seven this, on the shot clock. Yeah, had this team playing tough all season long, did Heather. They held firm and come in with the number three seed. At one point, there was a thought, and it looked like they could come in as the number two seed. But things got so jumbled up, and a strong finish for New Mexico. Wyoming had that little bit of that skid that hurt them a little bit. Nevertheless, number three seed, very impressive in this competitive league. <laughs> uh, Maya Hansen fading back, got the shooter's touch. That one looked like it was going to fall off to the right instead. Around and in. And that stops a 6-0 run for the Cowgirls. Nice pass. What an angle and what a catch down low from Allison Furtu. Oh, man, that pass was incredible. The wrap around had to be difficult, had to have a little bit of English on it, and it did. Yeah, that was perfection. And Spurtick now two for two. High screen, Pasco gives it up. Hansen, high archer off the iron. That one had a good look, but doesn't go. Calgary's four for their last four field goals. And good hands by Muse, tips it back. And an offensive foul call as Barnes was trying to get position inside and knocks down her defender. Hansen was fired up about taking that charge. Nice sportsmanship, by the way, and Barnes helping lift up yep. her opponent and Hansen. Maddie Simons, yeah, will come in. The freshman, she'll take her place. Yeah, she was uh, yelling while <laughs> Barnes helped her up, even, even though she was screaming right at her. <laughs> Love to see it, though. Yep. Mary Kay Nero. There's Hampson. Defense switching and moving. Boise State very active. And they're gonna wave off the shot. They're gonna say there was a foul prior to that. It's gonna be on Marta Savic, who's checked in for the Cowgirls. Her first, team second. Hansen, high oh. arbor, nothing but net. How about the season that Hansen is having this year, picking up from a great freshman year, had excellent experience in 23 with 26 games. That court time has really translated well here this season for the sophomore out of Billings, Montana. Yep, certainly has. She had 20 starts on the year last year as well, so got some time in her first season and then has just picked it up, had eight points last night in the win against Utah State. Shot clock winding down to five. And Wyoming trying to get a look. Savage recognizing way off the mark and a shot clock violation. Good defensive sequence for the Broncos. McKinley Dickerson's gonna come in. Senior out of Wyoming. Trista Hull is in, 22 in blue for the Broncos. Setting the high screen for Hansen. She is feeling a big fist bump and emotion for Maya Hansen, the sophomore. Eight points for her. Two or three from downtown. And the first lead for the Broncos since they started the game. 
And it's a 6-0 run to regain that lead since the very start. We'll take the timeout. 440 remaining first quarter. Boise State heating up. Back inside the Thomas and Mac. We got a close win between six seed Boise State, three seed Wyoming. It was Wyoming on a run, and now the Broncos a 6-0 run to regain the lead in this one. Wyoming has to find an answer for Hanson. She's she's starting to shoot logo threes in this game. Eight of their ten points are for Hanson. She's two of three out behind the three-point arc. Let's see if the Cowgirls can make an adjustment. Or can Hansen keep the hot hand? Trying to work it inside, topside D. Savic with the takeaway. The denial, didn't get the foul, wasn't leaning on. On my screen, Dickerson using it, can't connect. Long rebound, Savic is there. Big minutes off the bench for her. Senior from Croatia. Hard curl from Peterson. They can't get it to her. Oh, and the left side drive, and the finish is good as Tess Barnes scoops it up. Tess Barnes has just been a great addition to this ball club out of Australia. She's good height, great length at 6'2", but she's, she has a knack for basketball. Very good understanding of this game. Ties it all up. High post shot, no good for Abby Mews. A triple double yesterday, yeah. Abby Mews. No doubt about it. The third triple double in program history, but Wyoming, after the timeout, they've got an answer and now they regain the lead. Yeah, but the triple double for Abby Mews. 12 points, 11 boards, 10 assists in the win against Utah State and they'll say, off of Wyoming, it'll stay with the Broncos. Substitutions come in. Oh, oh. Danny Bays got, gets tripped up as she checks in. <laughs> She's laughing at herself. <laughs> We've all done it. As you take a look at this long three by Malima. That gave Wyoming the lead back. Aggressive drive, but the block from behind. That's Fertig who's checked back in. Tatum Thompson also in zero and blue for the Broncos. Teammates love the block by Fertig. Katioli Linen is in 14 and white. There she is right there. Freshman from Finland. And the drive trying to bank it off the mark for Barnes. It'll stay here. Fertig doing a great job on the old boards. Drive by Barnes. Couldn't get the shot, but see Fertig right there and her height and advantage. She just stayed, kept the hands up, stayed up above. Keep it alive, another chance. And on the inbound play, it works. Bucket good for Dickerson. Yeah, missed assignment there defensively. Well executed by Wyoming just to get the easy weak side underneath the bucket. So far, a game of runs for both sides. Now a 7-0 run for Wyoming. That's a lot of open space right there to have to guard Hanson. Yeah, it sure is. Crafty with the ball. Well, not giving up on the play was Trista Hall. Ball tipped, taken away by Wyoming with just two minutes remaining in this first quarter. It's been a fairly fast pace, but a blocking foul call on the Broncos. It's going to be the second team foul. Hanson, team Wyoming, they're trying to move the ball. Uh, around the horn and Scott Osborne, one of our officials here today, calling the block early. Mia Hansen will pick up that foul. Scott Osborne, McCole Murray, and Ashley Ellis, the trio tonight. Just under two minutes left in the first. Oh, an aggressive drive and the finish. How about Dickerson off the bench? Former McKinley Bradshaw. Did not play last year, had 29 starts in 2022, was a big time player, and they are glad to have her back. She's quick, she's strong, and watch this. Hands up by Danny Bays, 
And Dickerson says, all right, you're going to be hands up. That means you're standing up, and you're not in a defensive stance like that. You're not bending your knees. I'm just going to drive baseline, and she did with a lot of power. And it's a 9-0 run for the Cowgirls, and the Broncos got to try to stop the bleeding, get this turn back around as this is the largest lead of the game for Wyoming. No need to panic at no. this point. A lot of game left, and they're right in it. But it's definitely been a game of runs. The Broncos had one just prior to this one. And Buster's going to take a seat. Buster's exhausted already. Going to get some water, got to hydrate. <laughs> He's just watching this Wyoming team shoot 67% from the field. Pounding defense. The Wyoming fans wanted the count. They don't get it. Hanson trying to get some space, knocks it off her own foot. Wyoming, oh no, they'll say it was off of Wyoming. Boy, I thought they knocked it off of her. Break for the Broncos. But Hanson, just a sophomore, what a special player she is. Good Got switch defensively. Billings, Montana lofts it up and they're gonna call a late whistle and the foul on the Cowgirls. Hanson is absolutely fearless. Watch this, watch this take. The lefty, she's going up against Tess Barnes at 6'2", Mia Hansen. She's 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, Giving up a couple inches doesn't matter. She's tough off the dribble. Gets the first to rattle in. Barnes picks up her second personal. Hansen's got nine points, make it up nine points with that free throw. Mm -hmm. We haven't even played a full quarter of basketball. Yeah, I know. She averages nine a game. She's already at her average on the season. She has come ready to play. Broncos within six. Drive, dish it off. Wide open on the other side. Fertig with the layup. No rotation there. You got to get inside Fertig. There was nobody on that weak side to rotate inside Fertig. Hand up to Hansen. She's had the hot hand. Got caught underneath the rim and a foul as she was driving in. 11-1 run for Wyoming has helped them extend the lead back out. You look at the contact that she draws. She's just not afraid of contact. She knows how to draw the contact, drives down the lane, has such great awareness of where the defenders are. She's always looking to get that and one. She is a finisher. Fallon Simons is her first. First free throw off the mark for Hansen gets the second, 84% free thrower. Don't see her miss very often. Here's Maddie Simons, freshman out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Fertig right into the hands of Trista Hall. Bays will bring it back out. Clock down to 10. First quarter winding down. They get it to their hot-handed shooter, and then the, she gives it up to Hall on rebound, and that's going to do it. First quarter in the books. And Wyoming, it was back and forth, but they were able to get on a run here late, and they take the seven-point lead into the second quarter. Over six seed Boise State. Second quarter for you when we return. Cowgirls getting the offense going. They're shooting 64%. A lot of their points coming from the inside. 14 of their 19 TB points in the paint. Yeah, you know, a lot of that it for, for Wyoming is doing a really good job of getting players like Fertig open and really just kind of attacking. And for Boise State, Hanson's got 10, and she's getting to the rim. 10 of the 12 points, you're right. Uh, Only Abby Muse has another bucket 
for the Cowgirls. They've got to find more, for the Broncos, excuse me, they've got to find more offense this quarter as that one won't go. Yeah, you got to get beige, you got to get narrow. Lalotte has really, hasn't played a whole lot of minutes. She's been in for just four of the first 10 minutes of the first quarter. Got to get her in. I thought she had a great game yesterday. Well, and Pasco's the only player for the Broncos averaging double digits on the season. Everybody else, though, is in that 8-point, 7-point, 9-point range. And so when you've got such a balanced attack, you need everybody putting in the numbers. Big plus that they have Hanson already at 10. Now they need some others to go with her. As a turnover for Wyoming gives the Broncos a chance. Nice attack there. Very good job by Nero. We just said it. You've got to start sharing the balance and the load. You love what Hansen is bringing, but Hansen cannot carry this team with a good scoring yep. team in Wyoming. Yeah, got to have some others. Mary Kay Nero, the senior out of Beaverton, Oregon. Started every game last season as the high to low to Fertig. She gets fouled. Many times we see Fertig all season long and in this tournament, she finds that weak side and her players find her as well. She just kind of camps out, just kind of quietly, but she's such a big target. Yeah, love to see her posting up so strong in there. She's going to go to the line. Dickerson comes off. And the first free throw too much. Junior from Glenda, Wyoming. Two-time All-Mountain West member named again this season. She leads this team in blocks, and at the mid-season year sort of prediction of the awards, I had talked to our own Bridget Howard about, I thought Allison Fertig deserved a nod, a good look at being all-defensive team and defensive player of the year. She's just that good, committed at both ends. Of course, that award went to Augman of New Mexico. Well-deserved. Yep. Whistle and a foul. It's going to go against the Broncos. Here's where the foul happens. You get the or, pass me. inside, and yeah, a lot, and then yeah, Fertig rather. Outside in and inside out. Fertig just gets the the hands. Both teams, one team foul apiece. Hand off the base and asking for it. Lalot right back. Too much. Batted around. It's going to stay. But a shot clock violation going to go the other way. Gordy Presnell in his 19th season as the head coach of the Broncos. I think he thought maybe there was a, still a tick on the clock <laughs> if it was their ball. But uh, we play on. Foul away from the ball. It's going to go against Mary Kay Nero. Team second. Just her first. Good ball movement by Wyoming. Impatience. Yep. Keeping their spacing, they work it around. The shot clock down to five now. And Malima was trying to find some space and instead the turnover will send it the other direction. They average about 14 a game, the Cowgirls do. And they have six in this one. Broncos force 14 a game. And they've given up 10 points off the turnovers. That's really the area hurting Wyoming, big plus for the Broncos. Narrow. Bullet pass through the lane, and it's taken out a little a lot. Hands go yeah. a lot. Right into Fertig, who yep. just held her ground, and good D. That's the thing about Fertig is she posted up, but too much on that one. She always seems to have her hands up and causes some problems. An aggressive drive, good. Mary Kay Nero with another one. She's starting to light up a little bit. Starting to attack. They're getting her involved. Sharing the ball now, Boise State. This is where they are so good when they share the ball. She's got four points, and the Broncos pull within four. 
High upper, top of the key, swish. Tess Barnes with a three ball. Her first three of the game, five points for Barnes. Balance attack by the Broncos, excuse me, by the Cowgirls, and the Broncos starting to spread it out a bit more. Oh, tough shot. Oh, reverse, up and under good. Lovovich with that reverse, man, pretty special. What a game she had yesterday. I thought she was one of the keys. She just, she had incredible energy for this Boise State team. Four points, three boards in the win against Utah State. Junior from Gig Harbor, Washington. She's really defending Peterson, but Peterson had that little up and under move, that little ball fake that got Lavrovich up in the air. And once Peterson had her beat, that's just almost an easy, too easy shot for Peterson. She's so crafty. Last year's freshman of the year from Helsinki, Finland in her sophomore season, or excuse me, from Denmark. And her sophomore season started every single game last year. And what an impressive first year she had. Shot clock to five. Curling in, giving it up. And the shot from Muse just short and hanging around, a little frustration, couldn't get out of the way, so the foul's gonna go on Muse. That'll be her first. And the team's third. Fresh legs back on for the Broncos. You saw the foul oh, just oh. on the follow-up. Did, didn't need it there, but Muse just kind of <laughs> poked her in the back. <laughs> Uses out and Cole is back in for the Broncos. Savage on for the Cowgirls. Here's Oli Linen. Savage back feeling out the, the day. Yep. yep. She's got such great hands from the post. And away from the ball, an offensive foul is pushing through. Maddie Simons commits it. Hanson's taken a few of those today for Boise State. Take the timeout. 4.58 remaining here in the first half. Just under five minutes remaining in the second quarter between six seed Boise State, three seed Wyoming, and the Cowgirls have the seven point lead over the Broncos. Their offense has been flowing just a bit better than Boise State's shooting 65% compared to 33% for the Broncos. They've got a fairly deep bench too. There's been nice production from multiple players coming in for Wyoming. Let's see if the Broncos can get a run going of their own. Thompson with the high screen, trying to get Hanson open. She started off on fire. Kick out to Pasco, long rebound, weak side board. Thompson with the cleanup. Excellent job on that weak side, just the pursuit of the offensive glass, and that's where Thompson and Boise State can hurt you. They are very good at pursuing the rebounds. And losing her footing was Dickerson, but a heady play to get it out to Ole Linen. And the defense almost a steal. So looks like the Broncos after the timeout. They've kicked it up a little bit. Yeah, they they're, got, they're playing a little scrappier, switching up some defense. Oh, Hanson fighting over the top there. And a great job defensively. Stick with Ole Linen. Yep. Pushing those baseline out of bounce plays. You can't let opponents get that quick hit. Help D rotates over. And making Dickerson hesitate on the shot just a bit. A good anticipation with the defense for Wyoming. The backdoor cut so tough to defend. And you got to be ready for it, and they were. Savage was there to help as well. Inbound and perfectly executed. That's Pasco with the bucket. 
first points of the game for Pasco. She leads the team in scoring, 13 a game. Big three-point shooter. She's hit 77 of them on the season. Did you see how good that Boise State is when they are sharing the ball and there is balance across the scoring? They are just down by three at this point. At this point. And multiple players for the Broncos getting involved, and they're finding it. Good take. Great. Great rebound by Hole. Oh, they force a turnover, yeah. and second effort leads to a big bucket. It's the O-board kick out for the bucket. We that ties up. it up. Look at Gordy Prez now. You absolutely have to appreciate it. He's up off the bench. 7-0 run for the Broncos. Both teams have had one or two already. It's the kind of game it's going to be. And Wyoming, another turnover. This extra pressure by Boise State forcing the turns. And it's been over two and a half minutes with a scoring drop for Wyoming. Here's the O'Board kick out, 4-3. And the dagger to tie things up. Again, great hustle by Hall. Almost got another one, but the Cowgirls will come down with it. Love the play of Maya Hansen. Hansen's been excellent in this game, from scoring to defending. I was gonna say both ends, yeah, right? Both ends. I mean, she's got really a dubious task of, you know, guarding some really tough guards, and she's made it difficult for the guards to see inside. She's had to fight through a lot of screens. I think the defense. Intensity for the Broncos these last few minutes has been the difference maker for them as the shot clock's winding down. Furtick real, realizing it's got to stay in there. Got the shot off, but she was swarmed by Trista Hall. Chance to take the lead, something they haven't had since the first quarter. Furtick says, not this time. Taking it inside amongst the trees, and Fertig come out, comes over. Big time block. We told you she leads this team in blocks. She's a great help defender. Moves her feet well. Good timing. Keeps the hands up. Broncos want to get something out of this, and they do. Lefty layup is good. It falls for Hansen. First lead since the first quarter for Boise State. Minute and a half remaining in the half. Oh, and count it. The and one, an aggressive move there from Peterson, and she's going to go to the free throw line. It's a good defensive sequence by the Broncos until this play where they get Peterson on the low block. She turns around. If you have stood next to Peterson, she is incredibly muscular. I was standing near her not you know, too long before this game. Her shoulders, her biceps, I mean, her upper body is incredibly strong. And she uses it on the court to her advantage. Yep. She does right there. And she is all muscle. Tied up once again. Thompson tries to take it in. The defense there with a minute left in the first half. High screen, Hanson hangs on to it. Fertig there to force her to kind of readjust and a chance for the Cowgirls to try to regain the lead. Oh, the isolation and they're gonna get called. Wyoming for the foul on Fertig. And they'll get Fertig for the hook. Second personal. They try to get her isolated in the paint. Got a 12 second differential, shot clock, game clock. Lefty drive by Pasco, no good. And the Cowgirls will get a chance to regain the lead just before halftime. The Broncos' defense has been stifling the last several minutes. Yeah. 
Good switch off there by the Broncos. Simons works it in. Savage, what a seal off inside. She says, yes, right where I wanted it. And the Cowgirls take the lead back in this one. We've got a good one. The winner moving on to the semifinals, and it's a close one. Here's the bucket. They find her. And Wyoming up by two. It's a close one here. Winner advances to the semis tomorrow. Our fourth quarterfinal matchup of the day, and Wyoming takes the lead at the buzzer 29 27 at the half. Well, courtside with you, I'm Bridget Howard. Well, these two teams split the regular season series, so of course we knew it was going to be a battle here tonight between the Cowgirls and the Broncos. Well, the Mountain West women's basketball season has certainly been a fun one, and yesterday the conference announced the Players and Coach of the Year awards, so let's take a look at who was honored. regular season title and the number one seed in the Mountain West Tournament. Young logged the second most points in the league, putting up 343 on the year, leading the conference in rebounds with 164 en route to 12 double-doubles. The Las Vegas native is the fourth player in Mountain West history to be named Player of the Year twice in her career, becoming the second Lady Rebel to win the honor multiple times. The Defensive Player of the Year is Anaya Ogman from New Mexico. Ogman helped the Lobos to a 12-6 league record, averaging over 14.5 points, nearly six rebounds, three and a half assists, and close to two steals per game this season. The junior Lobo shot over 42% from the field and 72% from the free throw line. Ogman is the second Lobo to be named the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, the first since the 2011-2012 season. Naya Wilson from New Mexico is the newcomer of the year in the Mountain West, becoming the seventh Lobo to earn the award. Wilson transferred into the league from Syracuse, immediately making a name for herself in conference action. She is fourth in the league in scoring, averaging over 17 points per game, while ranking 10th in assists with nearly three per game. The Lobo guard earned three Mountain West Player of the Week honors, averaging almost 34 minutes per game for the Cherry and Silver. Lady Rebel standout Amarachi Kimson is both the sixth player of the year and freshman of the year. Kimson earned three Mountain West Freshman of the Week honors while averaging nearly 11 points and two rebounds per game. The freshman guard ranked 17th in the league in scoring, shooting 54.5% from the field and 41% from long distance. The Scarlet and Gray star is the third Lady Rebel to be named Freshman of the Year, the first since the 2012-2013 season. She is the fourth UNLV player to be named sixth player of the year, the third year in a row a Lady Rebel has earned the honor. The Mountain West Coach of the Year is Mike Bradbury from New Mexico. The Lobos leader guided the team to a 12-6 record in league action, en route to a number two seed in the Mountain West Tournament. Bradbury is just the third coach from New Mexico to be named Mountain West Coach of the Year, the first since the 2014-2015 season. Congratulations to this year's award winners. We also want to give a shout out to Wyoming's Allison Furtick, Boise State's Natalie Pasco, who were named to the All Mountain West team. In addition to that, the defensive team saw a couple of Broncos and Cowgirls on there. Emily Melema and Abby Muse were named to the All Mountain West defensive team. So congratulations to all of them. All right, well, don't go anywhere, Mountain West fans, because we have got so much more coming up for you after the break. We'll be joined by the pros, Nate Kreckman and Jade Thomas.
Well, the nightcap has lived up to the hype between the Wyoming Cowgirls and the Boise State Broncos. At the break, Wyoming up 29 to 27, thanks to a nice little buzzer bucket from Marta Savage. How about it? All right, Jade Thomas, Nate Kreckman, I'm Bridget Howard. Jade, I'll start with you. This was a game of runs, as Krista said, during the play. Really, we saw that in fruition. And how did these two teams really kind of even themselves out as this one went on? Yeah, I don't think either team is playing bad per se, or, but I don't think either team is necessarily standing out. I would say that Boise State specifically, they have burst of individual performances. They have, you have Maya Hansen with 12 points. You know, she's definitely showing out. But I think Wyoming's playing a more balanced game. But for Boise State, I feel like they need to incorporate their more team basketball. Yeah, and Nate, I know you shared that same sentiment. You really were liking the way Wyoming was sharing the ball in that first half. Yeah, ball's just been popping. This is a Boise State team, best defensive team in the Mountain West, best field goal defense in the Mountain West, best shot blocking team in the Mountain West. Well, how do you neutralize some of that? You share the basketball, and that's what Wyoming has done here in this opening half. Ustowska's got four assists, Peterson and Barnes a couple of assists each. In fact, uh, 10 assists on 13 made field goals for Wyoming in that first half for the season. Boise State only allowing opponents to shoot 37% in that first half. Wyoming at 59%. The offensive game plan for Heather Ezell and the Cowgirls, it's been executed beautifully here in this game. It's certainly been working. Well, let's look back at the first half and those first couple of minutes. It was all Maya Hansen from Boise State. She had 12 points in the first half. And Jade, you were talking about a lot of individual performances. Well, Hansen really carried the load there for a while. <laughs> in that first half. Yes, absolutely. I think she's one of those players that you're okay with that individual performance because she's consistent. She's been scoring all game. And you see bursts from other people from Muse and just who who's gonna who's gonna play with her? It's not that they're playing bad or anything, it's just who's gonna step up so that they can be on Hansen's level scoring and on defense. And you just saw a three there from Tess Barnes for Wyoming. She moved into the starting role this season along with Emily Melema. It's really been great to see her settle into that role. She's been great as of late, Nate. Yeah, no, Wyoming really it played well in that first half. Dickerson gave some great minutes, excellent interior pass right there to Allison Fertig. However, you talk about that game of runs. Mary Kay Nero had one early on in that second quarter. She got to the rim a couple of times in a row. That was able to cut into that Wyoming lead. Tess Barnes hit a big time three after that kind of stemmed that run right there. And then after that, it became the Natalie Pasco show for a few minutes for Boise State. A 9-0 run by the Broncos. Tied the game back up at 27. Uh, we're at 29-27 going into the break after that Savage bucket. But yeah, Pasco finally got going a little bit. But Maya Hansen's been the story of this first half for Boise State. She just needs a few of her teammates to sort of join her a little bit more in the box score. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Natalie Pasco. She's the Broncos' leading scorer, but she didn't get her first buckets until late in that second quarter. So obviously, Gordy Presnell uh, probably would like to see a little bit more of her. An interesting nugget here. Wyoming is third. 13 and three when leading at the half this season. Three and 10 when trailing or tied. So that was a big bucket there at the buzzer from Marta Savage. When you guys look at these halftime stats, Jade, what stands out to you specifically about Wyoming? I mean, they're shooting almost 60% from the field. Yeah, absolutely. I think I would almost switch the page and see that Wyoming has nine turnovers. and. Boise State is still in this game, and, and it feels like Wyoming is really controlling the tempo. But if you see, Boise State is turning Wyoming over, who's a, normally a disciplined team. Yeah, it's been an exciting one here in this fourth quarter final matchup. And we've got the second half coming your way here after this break. Nate, Jade, it's been a fun one here today. But what else would we expect here in March at the Thomas and Mack Center at the Mountain West Tournament? All right, guys, well, don't go anywhere because Tammy Blackbird and Krista Blunk have the call for the second half coming up next. Fans starting to make some noise inside the Thomas and Mac. We've got a close one, the last quarterfinal matchup of the evening. And the winner moving on to the semifinals. It's a two-point lead for Wyoming. Crystal Blunt, Tammy Blackburn with you. Tammy, Wyoming shooting 59% compared to 35% 
for Boise State, but Boise State, the hustle points making the difference. They have forced turnovers, nine of them. They've gotten 12 points off of them. They're crashing the O board, six O boards, nine second chance points. It's those hustle plays that are keeping them right in it. It is, and when Boise State shares the ball and they get others involved, they are a better team. They were better, markedly better, when you saw that in the first half. Can they do it in the second half? We shall see, it's underway. Shot for Wyoming, no good, and a chance for the Broncos to tie or regain the lead. Hansen was so phenomenal. First quarter, 10 points, but held to just two more points in the second quarter, so Cowgirls shut her down. But the positive of that is that it forced others to get involved with the scoring for Boise State. Well, Wyoming won the first quarter. Boise State won the second quarter. Shot around and out for Lalotte. It's brought down by Wyoming. It was the adjustments by the Broncos in that second quarter that helped them close the gap. This team's met up in the regular season at Wyoming. It was the first game of conference play back on December 30th. And then they met up again, not until February 10th at Boise. Another turnover by the Cowgirls. The Broncos take advantage. Hansen just getting no openings from Gustowska <laughs> all over her. Oh, oh help D coming ran over in the takeaway. Ran into Fertig. Good as Fertig yeah. on the help defense. Just remarkable. We talked about her basketball IQ in the first half and her understanding of where players are going. She can make reads. She releases early, too. And, and that's one of the keys. And how about this lob inside to Fertig? And she's got a chance at a three-point play. Kept the ball up high. I tell you, she's hard to stop, Krista, when they isolate yep. her down low. Look at this. Little high-low. And they lead her to the bucket. We've been calling for that all tournament long. You know, get rid of the frozen rope passes from the guard to the post. Just lob them up there. Lead your teammate to that bucket. Nine points, trying to add to it, and does the first cowgirl to double digits. She has 10 and five rebounds. The junior, a three-time state champ out of Douglas High School, and a two-time Gatorade player of the year in the state of Wyoming. And a little give and go, and it drops in good. That is Muse with the bucket. The lot just looked right over. I thought she was gonna get called for the travel, to be honest with you. Kept her footwork moving, though. And just the, the, the dump off. Stauska thought about it. Wyoming, great spacing. They really opened things up on the perimeter. Oh, tie up. Oh, no. Good sportsmanship there. Malima and Hansen. Take a look at this. Yeah, it gets, it gets tough. Oh. They, get, they get tangled up and then. Whoa, <laughs> seeing Malima go to the ground, but nice job by Hansen to offer her hand out to try to help pick her up. I thought that would have been a foul on Hansen. <laughs> Malima went to the ground. My goodness, uh, so did the Wyoming fans. As that one from Lalat won't go. And Stauska with the rebound with authority. There's the perfect lob inside the and one. Fertig so strong, gets the finish. I tell you, when I was playing basketball in college, we worked on this day in and day out. We had some great bigs, and we did this all game long and all practice. It's the lob, you lead them to the basket, especially when they are pinning their defender and they're showing you their hand where they want it. You put that ball right there, let them go to work. Yep, nothing more frustrating for the post players then to work that hard and yep. just not get the ball and they find her but can't get the three-point play up the mark for the free throw Peterson lost her footing and Hansen connects Hansen. 14 for Mia Hansen
Peterson's been fairly quiet so far, trying to get an open look. Not easy, but high off the glass and good. Boy, that was a tough, tough shot. But again, it's that upper body strength of Peterson that really helps her on the finish. When you've got that kind of upper body strength, you're that strong, you can finish with that kind of close. Eight points for Peterson. She's perfect. Four for four from the floor. Hansen using the high screen, too much on it, and a rebound to Fertig. It's a five point lead for Wyoming. Barnes trying to reverse, can't get it. I think the defense of Trista Hole coming in off the bench has been phenomenal. She has been on Fertig. She has been on just about everybody out there in the post. She played that way yesterday against Utah State, and she used her length. Here's Peterson with the strength. You see she's she's got to go up against Lalotte there just to try to finish that one. Simons and has come in. And for the Broncos, Bay's back in. Oh, the big three ball is good. Ola Ustowska, the senior from Poland, connects. Hansen is not the only player on the court with a long ball three. Ustowska shows us she can go long. Third three of the game for the Cowgirls. Bays kicks it out. Narrow just misses. Peterson will bring it up. Simons trying to drive it in. Hanson thought she knocked it off, but Ravid will stay with Wyoming. We'll take the timeout. 4.51 remaining in the third. It's an eight point Wyoming lead. Welcome back inside the Thomas and Max Center. A close one between three seed Wyoming, six seed Boise State. Wyoming extending their lead out. Their largest so far, but it's only eight points, but they will take it. Four of their last field goals have gone in, and the Broncos a little bit of a scoring drought. See if they can make some adjustments here, but it will be Wyoming basketball underneath with nine on the shot clock. Savage was open for just a split <laughs> second on that weak side yeah, under the rim. Sure was. <laughs> shot clock to three. Good D. Not going to get the shot off. It's blocked and they'll let him play. Yeah, possession arrow for, or excuse me, possession Broncos. Good D by Boise State out of that timeout. High up top and around and in. Danny Bays connected on the three ball. The sophomore out of Brisbane, Australia. Averages seven points a game. Bays, her first points of this game. The fourth three ball for the Broncos, and they pull within five. Foul going to go against the Broncos. The kick out, the fake, and then there's the foul right there. Three and a half left in the third. It's a five point game. Wyoming now needing a bucket. A little over two minutes without one. Shot clock down to four. That one's short for Dickerson. Hanson will bring it up. 
and roll. And help D coming over, but Savage is going to get whistled for it. First team foul for the Cowgirls. And puts Tatum Thompson to the free throw line. Sophomore out of Woodenville, Washington. Guess who's back in for Wyoming? Number five, Tess Barnes. Thought she had a very good mm -hmm. first half. Five points for her in 14 minutes of play. Four rebounds, three assists. She did pick up two personal fouls, but I, I think she's a trouble spot for this Boise State team. One for two from the line for Thompson. She has three points. Nice and a takeaway. By Bays. Substitution Peterson back in. Dickerson will take a seat. And almost a steal, and it is. Defensive intensity picking up. That was Thompson. Can they get something out of it? the Broncos. That's the fifth three of the game for Boise State. Curl trying to toss it over to Fertig. Help D coming down. Broncos with some trapping and some defensive pressure causing problems. Look at this from the outside. It's Thompson from downtown. Just such a confident shooter. Six points for Thompson. Really like her game. And I tell you, the bench is up for the Broncos. They have closed this gap. We are basically even. Just a one-point lead for the Cowgirls. A tough oh, spin from Peterson and the finish. Looked like the D was going to stop her. Yeah, again, just that. But that strength of her, she's just so strong. Broncos had gotten it within one. Now back out to the three-point lead for Wyoming under two minutes remaining in the third. Oh, Thompson elevates up and over the defense. Big shot by the sophomore. She has eight points. Broncos hit three of their last three. Went off the iron, doesn't go for Tess Barnes, and a chance for Boise State to regain the lead. Last led back in the second quarter. Yeah, why not? I like that shot by Thompson. She's hot right now. And just missed. Under a minute left in the third. Too much on that one from Mustowska. Eight second differential. Shot clock, game clock here in this third quarter. One point Wyoming lead. Up by eight points earlier in the quarter. It's just been so close. Both teams have gone on runs. Oh, nice little hesitation move by Hansen. Bodies to the floor, and they're going to call a jump ball. And it's going to go the other direction. Thought Hansen might get something there. She goes to the ground, just a scramble, and good hustle play by Ustowska. Yep, ties it up, and they get the possession. And the athletic training staff helping Mary Kay narrow. A little floor burn action. Gotta love that. Let's 
10.7 ticks and on the clock Krista, to finish how, off this third. Krista, how key have Thompson's point production been? Just, you know, the last 90 seconds, two minutes of this third quarter to keep this game real close. And she is yet another weapon for the Broncos. Yep, she's had six points to help them get right back in this game. Skip across, Peterson wide open and drills it. Oh, what a great way to finish for the Cowgirls. Peterson has not missed from the perimeter. She is six for six from the floor. That's her first made three of the game. She's got 13. Heck of a pass from Malima, and she finds the bottom of the net. Peterson does. Ten minutes remaining to determine which team moves on to face seven seed San Diego State in the semifinal tomorrow evening. And it's a close one here, a four-point Wyoming lead. A game of runs, a much better third quarter for a second and third quarter really for Boise State. And this one could just go either direction. We'll see which team. I've really felt like the Broncos kicked up the defensive intensity. Gosh, but then Peterson hit that one to end the third quarter for yep. Wyoming, and that was big. Yeah, that takes the momentum back yep. just a bit. There's the screen up high for Bays. Long rebound. It's going to go to the Cowgirls. She's been working so hard. She's got Abby Muse on her right now. And curling in Barnes, Fertig on the weak side. And it's taken away by the Broncos. Narrow, help D coming over, almost a takeaway. Narrow, the crossover. Help D coming over, skips it out. And the jumper around and out for Thompson. Another rebound for Furtick, her sixth of the, or seventh of the game. That one I think meant for Furtick, but it made its way all the way across to Ustowska. Tipped out by the Broncos, six on the shot clock. It'll stay with Wyoming. Hansen back in as well as Pasco. And Lalotte back on. Lalotte, who is scoreless in this game. Just seven a seven game yeah, and down yeah. four. Just hasn't been able to find the find the bucket. Has a couple of personals. Now two on the shot clock. Quick inbound as Ferta got out of the way. Malima stepped in, but the shot was short. Field two second play. <laughs> that is. <laughs> We've seen that before. Yep. <laughs> Good screen by Muse, and then they find her on the roll. Boy, you love the execution there. Well, she had to go up tough with that one. Six points from Hughes. Yeah, the high screen and then perfect roll and finish. Barnes, aggressive drive left, nobody down there. That's what I like about her game. I think she's a problem for this Bronco team. I don't think that they have an answer for her length, her strength, and she just takes it right to the rim at 6-2, does Barnes. Seven points for Barnes. And another drive and a finish. Abby Muse is starting to light up. Hot. 6 3 senior out of Brentwood, California. The triple double yesterday for Muse. What a thing to witness. And it was yeah. just a beautiful team celebration. So joyful for her. Everybody was so happy for her. You could just feel the chemistry. She has eight points. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, that's a big deal. A tough shot. Malima. Can't finish, it's gonna go the other way. The Broncos within two. I just feel like this game could go down to the wire. Who has the ball in the last possession, right? 
They have not had a lead since the second quarter. Oh, this two. Oh, and a tough break. <laughs> team that had five starters back from a season ago. They made it to the quarterfinals, a loss to Colorado State, a close one. Wyoming made their way all the way to the championship game and the loss to the top seed UNLV, but a travel call on the Broncos, or uh, excuse me, on the Cowgirls will send it back to the Broncos. About Hanson, high Arthur, the <laughs> rainbow shot straight through. I just, you, you just have to appreciate her confidence. I mean, it's just, it started from the very get-go. The long range shot, she got this team started with some great energy, and she's feeling it, but how about Fertig coming down and a quick answer. First lead in a long time for the Broncos, but Fertig takes it right back. Hanson gets her shot swatted. Hanson thought she got fouled, no yes. call there. Wyoming going down the other way in transition. Lima will get the block instead. Tries to get in a little bit closer, Ooh. and they're going to call a blocking foul on Hanson. Hanson hit the deck hard. Glad to see her get up, and she's okay. She's got 17 points. She's hit three threes. There's the foul here. Hansen. You see Malima <laughs> just trying to back her in, and Hansen fired up. Knows how tight this game is. Frustration for the Broncos. They're just down one, though, here in the fourth. We're back inside the Thomas and Mack Center. We've got a close one for the finale tonight with 5.48 remaining. Six seat Boise State down just one. They were down by eight in the third. Both teams shooting well. Krista for the Broncos, 40%. Wyoming shooting 50%. Great three point shooting for the Broncos. They're at six of 15, which is good for 40 as well. Points off of turnovers. Wow. 18 for the Broncos. Too many turns by Wyoming, allowing the Broncos to keep this game close. And credit to them for turning Wyoming over and yeah. taking advantage of it. I was going to say, what a great job by the Broncos yep. to force the turns and then do something with them. The free throws for the Cowgirls makes it a three-point lead. 7 points for Malima after those free throws. Pearl into the lane. Pasco, shot no good. Extra effort. A second chance by Lalat. Hanson hooked D coming off on her and for good reason, but found an opening around and out. Lalat, another chance, cleans it up. Too many chances. Yep. Right there, Hanson uses the screen to curl off the shot. Lalat turned and looked for it. She knew it was going to leave the hand to Hanson. Fertig working hard to get deep into the lane and a lot doing everything she can to keep her out of there. That was a key putback for the lot. Fallon lot her third. It's the team's second. 501 remaining. Fertig will get a rest. Savage comes in. Hard to believe just the first bucket for the lot in this game. Yeah. But a timely one nonetheless. Yep. Great effort. Peterson, right baseline, just short. You know, Peterson has such a nice, soft touch, right? When she turns and has to make a tough shot like that, quick little baseline jumper. And soft yeah. touch, good cut by Pasco. Drives it up, and it's good. Back within one. Yeah, Peterson, that last miss, her first miss of the evening. She was six for six prior. Boise State taking the lead back with that last win. They haven't really been able to extend it out much once they've gotten it. Skip out, around and out for Ustowska. 
Watch out. Here come the Broncos. Eight lead changes, Krista, in this game. It's been tight. It's been a lot of fun, competitive. Foul away from the basketball with 4 3 remaining. Boise State hanging on to the one-point lead. Back and forth we go in this final quarter final of the evening. It's a one-point Boise State lead. They haven't had the lead it's a lot in this game, TD, but they are up by one over Wyoming with just a little over four minutes remaining. Starting to increase that shooting percentage and they've forced turnovers. They've gotten points off of them. The bench has been productive. They're catching up in the paint points as well. That had been primarily Wyoming. You know, and, and I like both of these teams in their rebounding numbers. Neither team dominating. It's 28 and 27 apiece. Wyoming, Broncos respectively. Hansen leads all scores. She has 17. She's been active from the start. The clock winding down the crossover, trying to lose Fertig, but Fertig stayed right with her. You know, Fertig just doesn't foul. She has not no. fouled out one time this entire season. She knows how to position herself defensively so she doesn't get in foul trouble. She knows and appreciates the value of being on the floor and being able to stay in there for as long as she can. What a line she has going with 14 points, eight rebounds. She has eight blocks as well, and that is a Mountain West Tournament record. Could we see another triple-double? Plenty of time left, and she's been so active. Shot just short. It's knocked out of bounds. Barnes and Fertig oh, are this fighting one, for you. This it's one I think will get overturned. <laughs> it will. Yeah. And, and it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 20 on the shot clock. Broncos have it. Just under three minutes left. They give it to Lalotte. The inbounder gets it back. Oh, with emotion, Mary Kay Nero, the senior. And finally extending the lead past one for the Broncos. Krista, sometimes the inbounder is the most dangerous player. And she certainly was there. And there she was. She's got seven. That one won't drop. Bit of a scoring drought over three minutes for Wyoming. They've been so red hot all game long. That was a, yeah, it, it was a big time shot by Nero stepping in after she inbounded the ball and makes the pass, steps in. Look at the lot. That's just, that's a flip right there. That's just too easy. It's a 6 0 Broncos run. What a Officials taking a look at the last play. see possibly if they stepped out of bounds on it or not. Let's see if we can take a look. Oh, was it a three yeah, it's or a two not? or a yeah. three. So her toe's on the line yeah, right, like there, the toes on it right there. Yep. So that'll change it. it makes it a three-point lead for Boise State. Oh, they're going to call it a three. Interesting. Yep. All okay. stands, and the Broncos fans love it. The stat monitor had changed the score, but they'll say, nope, give her the three ball. Seven of them for the Broncos. Lena lost her footing. She's back up. Got to fight over that high screen. They're trying to get Hanson to look. She gets one, right side, oh, swish. Oh, yeah. Boy, you knew that was going in. As soon as it came out of her hands, Hansen, big time. Boy, Maya really came to play today. She was ready, <laughs> well above her average on the season. Yep. Only averaging nine a game. I just like how she started the game. Oh. I thought it was, you From know, the start, yep. from the very start. From the start, just brought this team tempo energy that they needed. 10 points in the first quarter. 
for Hansen. She's got 19, and we're under two minutes remaining. A two-possession ball game, but it's a 9-0 Broncos run, and not they have not had one of those in quite some time. It's back in first quarter. Shot clock down to three. Can they extend it out even more? Help D all over, and a good stop defensively by the Cowgirls. So two possession game. The threes have not been falling much for Wyoming tonight. They've got four of them total, 29% from three. And if they are capable, they're coming into this game, Wyoming not, they don't wow you with their three point shooting percentage. Yep. It's only 30%, but they do have a few players on the floor that can certainly shoot the three ball. Number five, Tess Barnes is one of them, and she yep. is on the floor coming in at 37%. Oh, and trying to cross the lane pass to Fertig and good hands by Lalat to take it away. Oh, gosh, right in the yeah, midsection. Right stomach. Oh, she's okay. Hanson, I'm good. Just yep. Catch my breath. Hanson's like, let me just, <laughs> just come pick just me up. Give me a second here. <laughs> oh, this hurts. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Wow, you're tough. Maya Hanson, you are tough. And you got a foul if you're Wyoming. Two possession game. And they choose to just they and because have fouls also, to, they've got, they've fouls, got to fouls to give. To yeah. give no doubt. Want to stop the That's clock. That's the third team foul. Gordy Presnell's team. What a comeback for them. They just hung in close enough the whole time. Down by eight. That was the largest lead for Wyoming in the third quarter. Minute six remaining. San Diego State, the seventh seed awaiting the winner. We'll face tomorrow night in our second semifinal. We'll have them both for you. The first between top seed UNLV and five seed Colorado State. That'll be at five o'clock Pacific time. And then seven seed San Diego State. And the winner of this one after at 7.30. Great clock management by the Broncos on this possession. Down to three. Oh, oh. that one hurts. Oh. Gordy Bresnell wow. with the big fist pump on the sideline. That was huge. We just talked about the clock management. And then how about this to finish it after about 27 seconds? All the way down Woo. to two ticks on the shot clock and then a big time three. The eighth three of the game for the Broncos. I thought Gordy Presnell was going to dislocate I, his I shoulder he was going to come out with of the his fist shoes. <laughs> I, I thought they were going to have to reinsert <laughs> the shoulder socket. 47% <laughs> from three-point line for the Broncos. His team had had a tough stretch as far as the schedule goes coming into this tournament. But they had lost three in a row. They had to face the top seed UNLV. They had to face Air Force. It was a one-point loss in that one. And then they had to go to Colorado State, a loss in that one. They come into this one, and they're like, all right, we're the sixth seed. Took care of business last night against Utah State. Now you're facing the three seed Wyoming. They're nice and fresh. They've been down most of this game, but when they needed to get the lead going and they needed a surge and some energy, they got it from Hansen and others started to contribute. Pasco has 10 now, eight points for Muse. She and Thompson, both eight points apiece, really came on late. Narrow with seven points. What a great team effort, a balanced attack. Every single player has scored that's been out there. And the first free throw, no good for Hansen. Twelve oh run. And make it 13, and it is a 10-point lead, the largest for the Broncos all game. Tough, tough to take if you are Wyoming, but Boise State, again, just hung in there close enough. Then they yep. really kicked things up defensively, started trapping a bit, started forcing more turnovers. To me, the turnovers and then the conversion of points off of them is the big difference. Those fans having a great time. They're yeah. loving it. You know, they're, lo they're loving the fact that they got 21 points. 
Off of the turnovers. Oh. Well, we got the, That's the pretty impressive, I've never seen that before. I haven't either. Oh. Showing that little Mario okay. Brothers there. That's, that's the Wyoming fam getting into it. You can't spoil their party. You know, Krista, this game isn't over, but the score right now is not indicative of how close, how tight this game was for 39 and a half minutes. Absolutely. And it will not reflect at the end of the day how Wyoming played. And you hate to nope. see anybody lose, but it is survive in advance. And that's what the Broncos are doing. Yep. Certainly are. 21 ticks on the clock. Cordy Presnell may be breathing just a little bit easier on the sideline. First one no good for Lalotte, the senior out of Paris, France. It's the second. So a timeout call. The Broncos, if they can finish this off, they face seven seed San Diego State. I know you're going to be surprised at this, TB, but they split the regular season series. <laughs> Got the win at home, a nine-point win, and then a loss at San Diego State. And they lost pretty handily, San Diego State. Took it to him, 79-54 in that one. I think that's the Broncos fan that used to carry a baguette. Is that the same guy, or am I thinking of Might someone be. else? I don't know. Missed the baguette. I don't see the I don't see the can man for Wyoming. I'm not a sorts kind today. Of missing some of the history. Oh, we really the... are. We really are. But we had a good one, and it was so close. And you're not going to look at this final score yeah, and no, really get a feel for what this game had going on for a long time. Yeah, tip of the cap to Wyoming for sure. Their, their struggles of being able to find a bucket for a little bit too long is really kind of what, you know, did it for them. And they were shooting up yeah. above 50% almost this entire game. They're now down to 43%. And, and seven percentage points. On a lot of those shots, that, that will add up to a lot. There, there's your difference in the game right yep. there. Absolutely. Yo. The drive up, shot no good. Fertig oh gets fouled. And she will go to the line to try to add to her totals. She's got 14. They took away one of her blocks. She actually has seven, so now she's tied for the record in the tournament. Been asking the coaching staff for San Diego State. Who would you rather play, Wyoming or Boise State? Stacy Terry Hudson said, I don't know. And either team is obviously very, very tough. And then talking to the assistant coaches at San Diego State, they really like a matchup with Boise State. But all the coaches of San Diego State telling me at halftime, they have so much respect for both of these teams that we're seeing yeah. on the court today. And they know no matter who was going to win this game that they're going to be in for it uh, yeah. tomorrow. They're going to have to get ready tonight. They've got the 7.30 p.m. tip. Well, and I think you've seen the, the depth of the Broncos. They've got 13 bench points. Gordy Presnell was able to go to his bench, bring in fresh legs, but also bring in scoring. It's not just about, you know, defensive stoppers. And I mean, he had some great players coming in that have contributed to some offense when no one really but but Hanson for a while was scoring yeah and, and, and I just thought they were they were so much better and, and you know we both love Hanson's game I mean what's not to love about it but when Thompson started scoring Muse started scoring Nero started scoring I mean that that's just when you know things really started to change for for the Broncos I sure have Wyoming chooses to foul once again with 12.9. And it's a nine point lead for the Broncos. If these free throws go, that will probably just about do it. It would be difficult as it is with a three possession game, but the first one around and out for Thompson. How big has she been off the bench? The yep. sophomore with eight points, three rebounds. Gets the second. Back to a 10 point lead. Lombrovic back on and Lalotte as well. Oh 
jumper is good. Ustowska, the senior, adds to her totals, and Cordy Presnell calls the timeout with four seconds remaining. He's going to sub some players in and probably advance the ball, is my guess. This team going to get this quarterfinal win, and a tough one, as you see Heather Ezel talking to her group. They were in charge the majority of this game. But the Broncos, a surge late, and that big run, a 14-0 run, the biggest that they had had this entire game, changed everything. She's tough to get the ball in on. She kicks it. Stays with the Broncos. And the takeaway, Peterson gets the shot off, but that will do it. What a comeback by Boise State. Down by eight early on, but they kick things up defensively. A 14-0 run. They finish. They move on to the semifinal tomorrow night. Take on seven seed San Diego State. Send it to our post-game show. A fourth quarter fury fuels the Broncos' stampede into the semifinals. A 14-0 run in the fourth quarter that saw the Broncos outscore Wyoming 22-10 in the final frame. And Broncos are headed to the semifinals for the eighth time in program history. Nate Kreckman, Jay Thomas, Jesse Kurtz here on Winner's Stage. Let's go down courtside and get reaction from the victorious Broncos. Gordy Presnell hanging out with Bridge Howard. Thanks, Jess. Coach, I mean, what a fourth quarter performance from your group here tonight. How do you explain the effort it took to come back and send yourself to the semis? I was really proud of our players, you know. Uh, we had a lot of adversity tonight, and, and they, they, they hit us in the mouth early, and uh, we just kept coming back, coming back, and we hit big shots. Mary Kay hit a huge shot. Natalie uh, hit big shots, and, and uh, so, so did Maya. So uh, it's a great win for our program, and we're really excited about getting to play tomorrow. Maya Hansen, it's her second 20-point game of the season, but both of those outings have come in the last four games. What gives you the confidence in her ability to really prove and make shots when it matters most. You know, she has competitive greatness. She always performs well when, when you have to perform well. Yeah. And uh, we'd like her to do a little better maybe in the middle of the first quarter. <laughs> but, but at the end of the game, she's always been there for us. Uh, she she ha has no problem with missing the shot. And uh, she's a terrific player. We're fortunate she's a sophomore. Yeah, in that fourth quarter, your defense held Wyoming to less than 10 points. What would you like on that end from your group? You know, Elodie, uh, Kind of got taken to uh, the first half, and in the fourth quarter, she came up big and had big rebounds for us. And Abby had big rebounds, and Trista, uh, our post players, did a really nice job. Um, they, they really try to, you know, get the ball down inside, and, and we we're fortunate to win. And those guys stepped up. An exciting game from your Broncos, Coach. Congratulations. We will see you in the semis tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much. Back to you, Jesse. All right. Thank you very much, Bridget. Jay, this is a team that showed a ton of resilience. Down a lot early, down eight early. Had a uh, a run early by Maya Hansen, but then Wyoming just kept punching back, as Gordy Presnell said. A lot of resiliency, especially in that second half by the Boise State Broncos. Absolutely. Uh, Natalie did not stop going, and she ended with 20 points. And then Maya Hansen, or sorry, Maya yep. Hansen ended with 20 points with four assists, and like you said, sophomore. So that's a lot of youth that he has right there. Yeah, you know, Gordy Presnell always has a way of having these young you know, talented shooters. He seems to just churn them out. And Maya Hansen, one of the latest as a sophomore for the Boise State Broncos. Back down to Bridget, standing by with Maya. Thanks, Jess. All right, Maya, this is your second 20-point game here at the Mountain West Tournament in your career. What is it about March and Las Vegas and the Mountain West Tournament that brings out the best in your game? I mean, it's tourney time. I mean, it's March. That's what March is all about. And I'm just happy to be here. And anytime you get a chance to come on this court and play basketball, I'll take advantage of the opportunity. It felt like every player had a hand in this win tonight because it was a battle throughout the entire stretch. What made you most proud of how every player was able to step up when you guys needed them most? Oh, I mean, 
this is the time. I mean, we, we've had some, we've been through the dog days, we've been at highs and lows, and I've been confident with our team through it all. I'm so happy with this group. I'll say it again. I've been saying all, te all season, I'm really confident with our group. I'm confident in each person that they can step up and hit a shot, and you saw that tonight, which I'm so happy for. It was a pretty impressive fourth quarter performance from your Broncos. What changed? We just knew we, we were down a couple points. We just knew we had to get back into it. I mean, no game's guaranteed when you're in the tournament, so we knew we had this fourth quarter left. Might as well make it, take advantage of it. How much fun is this group having right now? Oh, I'm out. A great amount of fun. I mean, I love our team so much, both on and off the court. They're just great people. So if I can be with them all the time, I really would. So I'm taking advantage of it. It feels like we're seeing some of the best Bronco basketball that you guys have played all season. How much does a game like this give you the right type of energy heading into the semis? Oh, 100%. It gives us so much energy. I mean, you sell that. We know what we can do on the court, so we're going to try and stay at that level for the rest of the, uh, of the tournament. A lot of confidence. And guys, she's just a sophomore. So, I mean, I think we've got a pretty impressive career on our hands here from Maya Hansen. Excited to see you guys at the semis tomorrow. Maya, congratulations. Thank you so much. Back to you, Jess. All right. Thank you very much, Bridge. Uh, Maya Hansen has a great pedigree. She a sophomore at Boise State, but was the Gatorade Player of the Year, her senior year in Billings, Montana. A great shooter. And she started off so well, Nate. Uh, hit a couple of big threes, uh, had 10 points in the first quarter that really paced that opening stretch for the Broncos. Yeah, she finished with 20 points in that game, and uh, she hit a, a number of shots from downtown, three from behind the arc, three of her shots came in the paint, only one out of the mid-range, so a really efficient game out of Maya Hansen there today. You know, you mentioned that sophomore class for Boise State. Uh, Hansen with 20, Natalie Pasco had 10, Tatum Thompson had nine points in this game, uh, Danny Bays hit a three in this game. That sophomore class accounted for 42 of the 62 points that Boise State scored here today. So yeah, when Gordy Presnell talks about the future being bright, um, you know that that great group. They were they were good as freshmen. They're taking a big step forward here. They've already won two games here at the tournament. You know. There's a lot of pressure when you play at Boise State, right? Uh -huh. The four-peat, uh, five tournament championships. You talk about the number of legends that came out of that program. Like, these women know the kind of expectations that are on them, and yet they're growing into that right before our eyes. Jade, Natalie Pasco, you mentioned her uh, in, the, uh, in the introduction. Average 13 points, has 10, but it's when those shots come that make the biggest difference. She hit a dagger with 40 seconds to go that – basically put this game out of reach. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it goes back to just uh, Maya saying how the team has confidence in each other. You see that sometimes when, when girls start off slow and their mm -hmm. shot's not falling, it's it's really easy to get into your head. But that that shot was huge, and it really put the game away. And you see right here she was cutting back door. And when your shot's not going in, you just need to see the ball go in the basket. And that's what she did when she's cutting back door. She's doing her pull-up, whatever she can, to just see it go in. Nate, the, the mark of a great team is finding different ways to win, right? It's not going to be the same formula tonight as it was last night. It will be tomorrow. Yesterday, 13 different players made a field goal for Boise State. Uh, that's only the fourth time this century in Division I basketball, women's basketball, that that has happened. Today, just eight, five fewer, but you find a way to beat arguably a better team in a much different way. Yeah, and obviously a much tougher test here tonight against Wyoming than what they had last night. But uh, I thought one of the huge keys for Boise State in this game – they cranked it up defensively in that second half. Mm. First half of that game, the ball was popping for Wyoming. They shot 59% from the floor. In the second half, 30% from the field. In fact, Wyoming just 3 of 17 from the field in that fourth quarter. That Pasco 3 was the dagger that capped that 12-0 run. But really, it was on the defensive end of the court. That's where Boise State won this game tonight. Well, and you, you mentioned – the, uh, the defense, there you go right there, turnovers. Uh, Boise State, they only had nine turnovers, but they forced 15, got 21 points off of those uh, 15 turnovers. Well, and Maya Hansen, her game is threes in transition. This is a team, when they can force turnovers, Mary Kay Nero is going to push the tempo every single time that she has the ball. She is a pedal to the metal kind of player. They get the ball up the floor. They find those threes in transition. You saw a lot of that in the fourth quarter. And what's incredible is, Guys, they played last night, and yet I thought they just got stronger as this game went on. The conditioning of this Boise State team is incredible. Great closing kick to get this game tonight. 
Speaking of defense, tip of the cap to Allison Fertig, who today was sensational defensively in the post for Wyoming. Uh, did something very, very special. We thought she had broken the record for most blocks in a single tournament game. Had her at eight. They went back and reviewed it, took one away. So she officially tied the Mountain West tournament record in a single game with seven blocks, tying Bego Fazdavalos of Fresno State back in 2017. She's just so good, and she was just inching away from a double-double, but you just see her her big presence in the in the post down there just helps her team so much. Like, one step over, and she's in help defense, and just I wouldn't want to go up against somebody no. that tall or that big. So she's just a good presence to have, and she's smart. Well, all Mountain West for a reason. Nine games this season, she had at least ten rebounds and one block. She's a great scorer for Wyoming. Uh, just an all-around great play, and just a great post presence for Coach Giselle. Absolutely, and you see it right there. She waits to feel the bodies behind her, and then she goes up. So she's smart with it, and she uses her body to get into players just like right there. Uh, Nate, Boise State, uh, no stranger to moving on to the semifinals. They have now done this uh, eight times. They've won many uh, Mountain West Championship tournaments. What is it going to take for them to beat a San Diego State team that we saw just moments ago, a few hours ago, that – really has a lot of momentum themselves playing great basketball. Yeah, there's a lot of fun. We got the upset side of the bracket right here. A seven seed and a six seed in a semifinal coming tomorrow night between San Diego State and Boise State. Now, clearly, we're waiting to hear the status on Adriana Casada for San Diego State if she's going to be able to go tomorrow night. San Diego State is going to need her because Abby Muse, she is just so tough inside. She is such an excellent rebounder. San Diego State is going to need all the size that they have available to them possibly. But, yeah, uh, these are two teams. San Diego State, you know, they bounced back from getting blown out by UNLV, and they've been playing great basketball ever since that point. This is a Boise State team that, you know, lost three in a row coming into the tournament, but they've cranked it up since they have gotten here to Vegas. Both of these teams have looked great so far here at the Thomas & Mack. This is going to be a fun one tomorrow night. Jay, one thing when you look at this bracket, there are three of the four teams that are left that were fourth in the league, right? That tied for four. All state claim to we're the fourth best team in this league in the regular season standings. Tiebreakers broke that out. But three of those four teams are in the semifinals. And then UNLV, what does that say about you know the parity of this league? And in the middle, it's really anybody's league outside of UNLV, who is, ex you know, they've dominated this league for the better part of three years. But it was anybody's entrance into the semifinals between those teams. Absolutely. I think it shows that what you do in the regular season isn't automatically going to carry over into the postseason. So if if you're happy just because you get a four seed and you're, wow, we, we, it's great. Well, it's 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 about matchups in this league. Mm -hmm. And who what side of the bracket do you get? And what, what whose style goes? Do they have a fast style? Do they have a slow style? So it's really just about playing. And rankings and seedings don't matter. And yeah. I have some experience with that, yes, unfortunately. Yes, <laughs> But you just see that a seven seed can beat a two seeder, however it works. Unfortunately, I know that all too well. But the better team will win, no matter no matter what their seeding is. Ten and eight is the cool conference record to have this year. <laughs> well, Three of the four the ten mark. and eight teams <laughs> are going to the semifinals, so that's the cool thing to do. The gold standard next year: get to ten wins. Either that or go seventeen and one like <laughs> UNLV. <laughs> Only four teams are left standing. Congratulations to Lindy LaRock. 100th win at the helm of the Lady Rebels. Alyssa Brown and company moving on to the semifinals. Ryan Williams, his team has 20 wins on the season. Rosick with a 19 point effort. She propels the uh, Rams into the semifinals. And then Stacy Terry Hudson and the San Diego State Aztecs, the third team to punch their tickets to the semifinals. And one more team is headed, and that's the Boise State Broncos after knocking off Wyoming 62-54 to just moments ago here at the Thomas & Mack Center. We got two more games to play tomorrow in the semifinals. We'll see you right back here. Nate Crackman, Jay Thomas, Bridget Howard saying so long from Las Vegas.